Good morning, Wade. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you very much for joining. Um, so yeah, this is our virtual staging masterclass webinar. Um, so we're just going to be taking all of you through um, just the interface of virtual staging, showing you where everything sits. Um, yeah, just going through um, kind of all the buttons, all the options that are available at the moment, and then doing a, uh, a Q&A at the end as well. Um, so we'll just wait for a few more people to join before we get going. Where are we in the world, um, guys and girls? Where are we all? Put it into the comment section. Yeah, let us know where you are. Um, let's see if this uh, the, uh, the chat is working. Let's see, we've had one show through. Uh, Skeeter, can you show how to add a TV to a wall? Yeah, we'll get onto that later because I know a couple of people have asked about that one. Um, so we'll get onto that one uh, at the end in the Q&A. Um, but just to give you guys some, uh, some introductions, my name's Alex. Um, I'm the uh, Senior Account Manager for Captured, and I'm here with my colleague, Wade. Um, he's the Sales and Business Development Manager of Captured as well. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be taking you through the interface and, and show you how it's all working. As I mentioned, just waiting for a few more people to join, and then we can get stuck in. So yeah, guys, as I mentioned, I'll just be going through the interface with you and um, yeah, just going through assets, placement, rotation, scaling, uh, yeah, just, just everything on the interface, just to familiarize and onboard people with it who maybe aren't as familiar. Um, and then yes, we'll do, we'll do some Q&A. So any questions that you have throughout the webinar, please feel free to post them up and, uh, and we'll get through them and um, yeah, get answer any questions that you guys have. I'll give him a couple more minutes. Who we got? What we got here? Las Vegas. We've got some people from Melbourne, our uh, part of the town. Maui, Atlanta, Washington. Love it. Amazing. Israel. Amazing. Uh, Worldwide. I love it. This is great. Yeah, we've had some uh, had some really good feedback from our our virtual staging feature. Um, as I said, it's it's still in, it's still in beta. It's still still in uh, testing. So. Any feedback that you guys can provide us um, for this feature is much, much appreciated because we're going to integrate that into our development pipeline and um, yeah, make the feature as awesome as possible for all of you. So um, very exciting. I've already got so a mention here from Madeline. Uh, it says, I really appreciate how similar the movement slash scale tools of the current 3D modeling program. So thanks for that. Obviously, we're trying to make it intuitive for some people who already worked with this type of space before. So that's great feedback already been given through the comment section, which is great. Yeah, we're, we're very lucky to have some um, wizard developers on our team who, um, yeah, who are, who are great with that. So uh, Simon from the UK, hey Simon. Cool, so we'll get, we'll get through these, um, some of these questions towards the end, um, but I guess let's, let's kick off, let's make a start. Uh, there's quite a few of you in here already. Um, so yeah, as I said, feel free to, to post any questions as I'm talking um, throughout and uh, myself and Wade will get to some questions. One thing to mention too, Alex, sorry to interrupt you, Maddie. So just to mention as well, we've got some uh, live transcripts options here available to you guys as well. So closed captions, so anyone who might be hard of hearing uh, or slightly impaired with that aspect, just make sure you click on the uh, live transcript um, button at the bottom and also the Q&A section, obviously on the left-hand side, if you've got questions that we can get through towards the end. But I think I've just uh, got all the ground rules done. The housekeeping, Alex, go for it, Maddie. Oh, yeah. uh, thanks for that word. Yeah, thanks for mentioning those closed captions. Um, cool, let's let's kick it off then. So um, yeah, we have our virtual staging interface here. Um, this chair icon uh, in the top left corner, you can click that to expand and contract the menu to give yourself a bit more room um, if you're looking at the actual model. But we're going to expand this for now and just go through some of these assets. Uh, so at the moment, we're looking at our supplied assets. This is our supplied uh, asset library. We've got about 250 assets in here at the moment. Um, these are mainly focused towards real estate, but we're going to be adding in uh, more commercialized assets for office spaces, et cetera, uh, in the very new, near future. That's coming in the next uh, week or two. Um, so we're going to be constantly up updating and integrating assets into our library um, as well. So um, let's have a go at placing an asset. Um, so we'll start by just putting the, um, the tool around to here um, and let's search for, uh, we'll go with a chair um, to start with. So we'll type chair into the search bar. That search bar obviously allows you to search for, for assets. We'll scroll down. Let's find a nice comfy looking one. This one looks good. 
we'll click that. So I've just selected that with my left mouse button. Um, and then what I'm going to do is once I've selected it and the highlight, uh, the thumbnail is highlighted, I'm just going to hover my mouse over into the interface. And this is going to kind of give a, a preview shell of where the asset can be placed. So I'm going to move it around and place it fairly close in, in front of me so we can see what we're doing. And then to place it, I'm just going to click the left mouse button. See, that brings up a preview of the asset, but not all the textures are there at the moment. Uh, what I can do is move away from the asset if I want to confirm this placement, and I'm going to click my right mouse button to place it. So slightly away from the asset, click the right mouse button, and that's going to place the asset. But what we're going to do now is get into a little bit more um, of the movement of the asset. So I'm going to left click the asset again with my mouse, and I can choose from these three icons at the bottom. So we've got position, rotation, and scale. It will always start off by default with position. And then I can use either the red arrow to go left to right, or I can use this blue arrow here to go forward and backwards. And again, with all these uh, icons, we can switch to rotation. Um, this green arrow is going to rotate this on the floor axis round and then scale as well. We can increase or decrease the ratio of the asset um, or to ratio to scale. Um, we can uh, increase or decrease it. So those are a few of the simple um, kind of icons we can use, but we can also get a bit granular with each of these um, icons. So if we switch back to position, at the moment we have the X and the Z axis um, highlighted and we have the Y axis locked. This is just to give, um, make it a little bit easier to just initially place assets and then we can get a bit more granular as we go. Um, this asset was already placed along the floor um, when we initially placed it. But if we do want to change the Y axis, we can unlock it by uh, clicking the padlock button next to position. And we can use then that green arrow to go up or down. I'm going to wait until I see a nice bit of shadow on that asset before placing it down and selecting it and go from there. Um, another little trick as well, if you hadn't noticed, is there's this little pink uh, square um, at the intersection of the axes. So what we can do there is hold our left mouse button down and then we can drag that around anywhere in the tour to just give us a bit more autonomy over where we're placing the asset rather than having to go left and right and then forward and back individually. We can use that little pink square to really drag this around. Um, and any, any guys who are watching, feel free to throw any feedback suggestions in the chat as well um, that, we, that we can use to implement into the dev pipeline. Um, we also have a feedback button up here in the top right corner. Um, so yeah, feel free to, to throw any detailed feedback in there. It'd be much appreciated um, as we go through this, uh, this webinar. Cool, so we've done the position. Um, we can go back onto rotation now and the same with position over here on the right side menu, we can unlock these different axes just by clicking that padlock button. And this will open up um, a few more planes um, to, to play around with. Um, so we also have this blue axes, which will be a, a left and right tilt, to so tilt assets. And then we also have uh, the red one, which is going to be a forward and, and, and back tilt. So we can use that to place assets and rotate them um, as we want. What's another, another really important thing to note is we also have these forward and back buttons. So if you ever get a bit, a bit muddled with a placement, you can always just use this back button to skip a step back and then go back to where the asset was placed uh, previously um, within the model. So forward and back, these can be really, really useful just for like, uh, yeah, just rectifying any movements that you've made um, in position, rotation and scale. Um, so again, just going across from rotation onto scale now. Um, as I mentioned before, the, uh, the green line on scale is just going to keep the ratio of the asset um, and the scale of it as you increase it in size. Um, it's not going to trip up in any width or height or anything, but you can, uh, again, unclick the scale or click the scale icon um, to open up these other axes. And this is going to allow you to change other things like just the height um, of the asset or even just the length of the assets and also the width as well. So this allows you to just kind of modify assets a little bit and, and elongate them and uh, um, lengthen them if you need to. Um, again, you can use these forward and back buttons just to give uh, yourselves um, a bit of room there. Um, so that's kind of how uh, positioning works, rotation and scale, and how you can kind of use these axes on the right side menu to make it a little bit more granular and, and make any fine tweaks that you need. Um, 
just going up, staying on the, the, the right side of the menu, we have all our placed assets within the tour up here. Um, so these are all our assets we've, we've placed in the tour. Let's move around a little bit and get a, get a different view. One sec, there we go. Cool. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, this is uh, all the assets, a list here of everything that's been placed um, within the tour. So we can also remove assets if we want um, from, from the tour, so this plant here, we can just press that bin button to clear that out. You can see it's disappeared now. And then again, just going back to these forward and back buttons to, uh, to rectify any mistakes that are made. So yeah, this is, uh, this is where you're able to, yeah, to remove assets that have been placed from the tour and then add them back in. Um, up here on the right, uh, top right is the lighting tab as well. Um, so I'm just gonna get back into a corner of the tour just so that you guys can see all of the assets to give a bit of a better perspective. So as you can see here, um, we can click the lighting tab and this will affect the brightness of the assets. So you can use this sliding scale left and right to increase or decrease the lighting of the assets dependent on the, the lighting within, within the Matterport model um, to make it as um, accurate as possible. So just to note as well, at the moment where the brightness level will control all assets within the tour simultaneously, we are working on um, allowing individual lighting for each asset. Um, so yeah, we'll be working on that to, to release uh, at a future date. Um, as well as the sliding scale, we've also got a, a drop down menu, which you can choose kind of different lighting uh, within here, depending on how light or dark you need everything. We'll just turn that up a little bit there. Um, so that's lighting. Uh, just remember, guys, as you're going through, you can always save your work, um, just ensuring that, yeah, you have everything saved and banked within the interface um, so that when you come, if you leave and come back in, all these assets will be in the same place um, as you left them. Moving on now to uh, over to the left side menu. Um, so I went through some of these supplied assets with you before. Um, now we're just going to click down onto custom. So we do allow you to upload your own assets. Right now it's GLB file types only. Um, we are working on integrating other file types in, um, but yeah, for the moment it's just GLB files. So you can upload your own files um, through clicking the plus button. So you can add a custom asset here to upload the file from your computer. Um, just a couple of tips, Sketchfab is a really, really awesome uh, website for accessing uh, both free and paid 3D assets. Um, I found that just, just searching for GLB files um, in the search bar on Sketchfab is, is, a, is a good way to go. You can convert files as well um, into GLBs, to, but just make sure that any files that you're converting have textures. I know there was some issues um, converting FBX files um, that didn't have the textures within them. So just make sure that um, yeah, your initial file um, does have textures and everything in there for when you convert it to GLB. Um, a really good website for uh, free online asset conversion is uh, anyconverts.com. Um, so the, yeah, that allows free, free um, uh, GLB um, compatibility with that as well. So um, what we can do as well is once you've uploaded assets, we can start placing some of these in. Um, so for example, we can click um, down here, let's go on polar bear. And just to note guys, there are a couple of bugs that we're working on fixing at the moment within custom assets. Um, we're gonna be adding in a scroll function um, and also the ability to delete custom assets once you've uploaded them. So that's in our very immediate pipeline to integrate in. So um, apologies if you guys have been experiencing any issues there, um, but yeah, we're, we're on it um, and, and we'll be getting that fixed and updated very, very shortly. Um, cool, so let's click on one of these. Icons. Hmm. Open me a second. I might just give my page a little refresh. And we'll move forward back into that room that we were in. Awesome. So guys, again, let's go on to custom. And we'll give one of these a go. Uh, 
Okay, we'll maybe move on to that a little bit later. I'm not sure what's going on here. Maybe I've uploaded, oh, here we go. Um, so this is a piece that we have here. We can place it on the table. Um, this is actually another 3D model of a 3D tour that we did um, that we have then integrated into here. So again, what we can do is scale this up a bit to make it a bit larger. So this is a little model that we've placed in. It's also animated. Um, you can also place, as you can see, um, assets on top of other assets. So we've put this on top of the table. Um, you can do that with any of the assets that we have in here as well. So you can place them either on the floor um, or on, um, on other assets as well. Um, something that I wanted to go through um, was the placement of uh, TVs on the wall. I know this has been requested by a couple of you guys, so I'm just going to talk you through how to, what's be the best way to place a TV for now um, within the interface. So I'll face this wall, which I'll try and I'll try and mount the TV on. So again, we're going to go into supplied assets, which is our library. We'll type in TV. We'll go for a 50 inch. How about that? Right, as you can see at the moment, the TV, if you're facing and placing it on the wall is on the wrong plane at the moment, but there is a nice little trick that will help you uh, to be as efficient as possible when placing these assets. The best thing to do is put this TV and drag it down towards the floor. And that's actually gonna then put the TV on the right plane, and then you can then move it up to the wall. Um, it's gonna be a lot quicker. We'll work on, um, we'll work on how the planes are set for, for different services and different assets. But for now, placing it on the floor is a really good shout um so we'll click to place it um and then click it i think this is actually the other way around so we'll rotate that asset round click it again there we go um and then what we can do is once we've placed it on the floor we're going to click the position icon unclick the padlock on the right hand side of the menu just to unlock that y-axis and then we're going to drag this up and place it where we need to Let's get it a bit more central on that wall. Maybe put it back a little bit. There we go. So um, yeah, that's the answer to um, a question that I know a couple of you have been asking of the best way to, to place TVs on wall. Place it on the floor first. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to play around with rotation a lot when it's on the wall. Um, the best way to, if you do want to place it on the wall and we place it on the wrong plane, See, we're just going to be using that rotation um, tab to sort that out. So again, clicking on rotation, um, unlocking all of the axes so that then we can flip this up as we need to um, from there. And I think we'll need to turn it all the way around. Position, bring it out a little bit. You can see it's a little bit longer. It can be done, but yeah, best way to go, place it on the floor first. There's also a, a couple of other tricks with placing things um, on the wall. Um, I know Matterport are bringing out a blur tool. I know a lot of, a lot of us are very keen to see um, the blur tool come out so we can hide the camera in mirrors and things like that. There is a slight workaround for now. Um, if you guys need to, I'm just gonna get into the bathroom to just show you an example um, of how we can hide mirrors as well within the tour. Um, in the meantime, so I think we're gonna go in here. Here we go. So here we have a nice big Matterport camera in front of us, uh, in front of the mirror. Um, what we can do, um, if you really need to hide the camera, we can you know, hide it with things like paintings as well within mirrors so we can choose the abstract painting. Again, we'll place it on a flat surface. In this case, I can place it on the uh, bathroom uh, sink uh, top. Um, so we'll place it down Again, yeah, maybe scale this down a little bit. See Daisy, there we go. And I'm just going to position this back into hiding the camera. Obviously, not ideal. Um, you know, having this in the bathroom in front of the mirror, but you know, some some clients really do insist on the the camera being hidden. So um, this is a good way to do it. So we can just pull it up there, right click again to place the asset, and there you go, it's hidden. Um, looks pretty good. Um, cool. So that is how to. Um, to place assets, especially kind of on walls with paintings and TVs and things like that. So hopefully you should find a workaround on there. Um, let's have a little look. Yeah, as I mentioned before, guys, um, the feedback button here in the top right corner, 
really, really important. We really, really appreciate you guys doing some testing and providing us with as much feedback as possible. Um, we do listen to every bit of feedback that you're giving um, and implement it into our development roadmap. So um, yeah, we want to make this product as awesome for you guys as possible. And yeah, we, uh, we, we want to listen to you in, in terms of what you need uh, to make that happen. Um, yeah, just a couple of things that are coming soon. Um, I know I just did mention this before, but I'll say it again. We do have the ability to uh, coming to delete custom assets and then have that scroll bar availability here. Um, we're also going to be implementing um, batch uploads to your custom assets in the very near future as well. Um, so yeah, you're going to be able to upload a whole library of your own assets and just have them in your library. Um, ready to go. Um, and as I mentioned before, we will be adding a lot more assets for commercial use, not just real estate, um, but trying to target other industries as well. Um, again, any feedback for assets um, that you have, please put it in the feedback form and um, we'll let our designers know. Um, so that's going to be really, really useful in the future. Um, just a couple of known bugs that we have as well, just to make you guys aware. Um, on the navigation menu, um, in the captured property pages. If you're adding a virtual tour um, that has been staged and you're adding more, um, sorry, where are we? It's going to the overlay. And we're adding more, um, you're adding more tours into the navigation menu. Any changes that you um, apply within the hero tour and then add in other tours too, it's going to apply the same staging into the additional tours. That's something we're working on at the moment. So apologies if you guys have experienced a bit of bugginess there. Um, but yeah, definitely something we're aware of and we'll be updating very, very soon um, for you guys as well. Um, so that's kind of an overview. Um, we do have some really good news that um, as well as um, increased number of assets into the library for commercial use, as, as well as more real estate assets, they're gonna be a lot higher quality um, uh, soon as well. So as I mentioned, we do have some development wizards who have able, been able to um, further compress assets without losing any quality at all, um, which is gonna be, it's gonna be very, very exciting just to get these assets as realistic as possible. Um, I worth mentioning, Alex, too, the fact that um, our company has come and stemmed a lot from these types of industries in terms of the whole XR or extended reality space. So the exciting part of that, that our team itself is incredibly um, skilled in this this, um, this space over the past six, seven years of our company's existence. So be rest assured that we are working behind the scenes and be able to you know, change and move and modify a lot of these things. So there's compressions and also textual stuff that's obviously got to be uh, better than what you guys are seeing at the moment. So be rest assured, we are skilled in this in this actual space and I'll be seeing some tremendous gains and improvements over the coming weeks, if not months. So exciting, incredibly exciting. And obviously I'm biased being that I work for the company, but uh, coming from a background that doesn't specialize in this space and seeing what these uh, guys and girls can do, incredibly exciting. Yeah, I love it. No, it's, yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, the best is yet to come. Absolutely. Um, we're, we're really, really chuffed to have been able to not only add assets, but um, animated assets as well, as you can see, see from here as well. So yeah, as I said, it's only the beginning and um, yeah, really, really excited to, um, to keep updating this constantly um, as we, as we progress. Um, cool. I think that's kind of it as an overview. Um, of the interface and what you can do. I think we, maybe we can move on to some questions now just to, uh, to get those answered. Um, I'll just open up the question window. Let's see what we've got. Wade, thank you. I know you've been answering a few here as well anyway, um, but Wade, feel free to fire some questions at me. Um, so well, I'll actually, um, I, I, was a bit, I was a bit cheeky and actually answer some of the questions along along the way. So uh, there was a question, simple questions is when when I add my own assets, will I have the same control of the positioning and sizing? And the answer was yes, of course you can. So obviously once you've uploaded your own asset, you'll have the same mm -hmm. controls and functionality that you did if you use the uh, assets that come um, as built or in, into the actual um, uh, yeah. program that we've created. Uh, there's mm -hmm. one from Ross here that said, is it possible to adjust the brightness and saturation of the overall model? Uh, the answer is, uh, no, at this stage, only on the assets itself that's been uh, put into position. And I think mm. Ross, Ross has actually come back saying that he'd like to see the adjusting of brightness, saturation, and white balance as a priority. So yeah. again, these types of questions are great that you've asked. And we've also, just letting you know, copying and pasting everything that's been put in Q&A and putting it into uh, our dev pipelines and be able to prioritize accordingly. Another that's one from Laurie here. Um, I was, I answer this one as well. Uh, she's, I have pro multiple property uh, property tours within one client profile for multiple multifamily. <clears throat> Excuse me. In order to stage the unit I want, I have to move the desired model to the start position in the overlay section, then move it back afterwards. 
Is there a better solution for this? These two are alive, so I don't like to move the old, uh, older of the videos, thanks. As I just write, basically, that team are currently working on making this work more efficiently. Uh, at the moment, you'll need to place the, v, the virtual tour in a separate captured property to stage before bringing it to the multi-tour. So I've been cheeky there, Alex, and answering some of the questions. No, I love it. No, that's great, Wade. No, th thanks. Thanks so much. Right, man. I've, got, I've got a few other questions here. Um, I know Skeeter uh, posed the question initially, can you show how to, how to add a TV to the wall? So hopefully I've, I've explained that enough. Um, yeah, just adding it onto the floor first and then moving it up to the wall as yeah, some of the assets are on, on different planes, which we're definitely um, going to be updating in the, in the near future. Andrew Lowry, um, mentioned that assets are moving when you move throughout the tour. So if you put a plant on the floor and you move around, it's in a different location. You need to fix this ASAP, 100% agree with you. There are uh, issues with a couple of assets, not all of them, where they do move around slightly um, when you move around to different sweeps on the model. So yeah, thank you, Andrew. That's something that we're definitely aware of and we'll be fixing up ASAP um, for sure. Um, when I resize an asset, another question from Andrew, when I resize an asset, I want to clone the size of the asset. So this asset is the same size when I add additional assets, chairs as an example. Great, great point. Um, yeah, it's something that we are that we're definitely considering to be able to save scaling and ratio of, of assets so that you can just add them in and they're all exactly the same rather than resizing them each time. That's a great suggestion. Thank you very much. Um, something that's is in, our, in our development pipeline. Uh, David asked uh, that some assets come into the scene on their side. Is there a way to avoid that or a quick way to fix it? So I think this kind of relates back to adding a TV to a wall. Um, some assets are, are on different planes, for example, the TVs and the paintings. Um, so hopefully this, this uh, answers your question that, yeah, placing the, the asset on the floor first, so it's on the correct plane, and then just moving it up to the wall is, is a lot more efficient way of doing it. But again, yeah, we're going to be fixing that um, up in the very, very near future. Uh, Ross Coulter, add white balance. Um, yeah, something we're, we're considering. Just to note, guys, as well, if you weren't aware that our platform is also compatible with MP Embed, and MP Embed um, does have a, have a lot of those um, white balance options, brightness options as well within the actual model. Um, so if you're bringing a tour over into Captured, um, you can use the MP Embed URL to just put into Captured and then create the tour, and it will have the settings that the MP Embed tour previously had when you bring them over into Captured. Um, where are we? So... Um, can you drop a QR code to link to further information? Um, it's, a very, it's a very, very good question. Um, you can place imagery in, into um, the virtual tour. So if you convert your QR code to a GLB file and integrate it into the tour, I don't see any reason why that wouldn't um, be able to be activated within, within the tour. So that's, that's a great suggestion, um, great question. I haven't heard that one before. Um, when you put, Alex. sorry, wait, go on. I don't know if you here from Thomas. Is when, when you put an animation at tour, does it repeat, continue, or restart when you switch position? So mm -hmm. you're playing with animated uh, in inclusion. It's basically on a loop. Um, the idea is obviously it's confined within the space that you've placed it. So the idea is your animation itself, obviously being a sprite from, you know, this frame to this frame and at the length of itself will repeat itself on loop. Um, so I think you might have seen from previous ones, we had an elephant and a few other things. We've actually put a manta ray in the space using some of the assets we created for uh, Rewild. Uh, we worked quite closely with some uh, notables like Netflix and um, WWF in regards to some of the stuff we did and, and put a man manta ray in the space on loop and it floated around the room, knew its boundaries, but basically, yeah, it was on loop based on what we created as an animation. So I hope that answered your question there. Yeah, and ju yeah, just to confirm, it's um, it doesn't, um, reset when you move to a different sweep. It will play the animation throughout, no matter what sweep you're moving to, and then restart again uh, once the animation time has has um, has expired. So um, yeah, no no restarting on uh, when you move to a different sweep, which uh, which is and great. Thomas just came back saying thank you. So no worries, mate. We're glad we can answer that for you. Lovely. That's great. Um, yeah, and Alan said assets will align with different planes. Um, yeah, kind of kind of covered that one already. Definitely looking up updating some assets that need to be changed on their plane to, yeah, especially TVs and paintings and, and really just other wall assets as well. Um, hey, Alex, can we, be, can, yes. we be cheeky? can we be cheeky? Yeah, just mix it up a little bit while in between. Can we, uh, any chance you can go into the custom assets and, and chuck that matter ray in there, mate? Just, just be something a bit cheeky, a bit different. Yeah, sure. I mean, there was just a bit of an issue with the scrolling. I think we added a few assets in testing um, 
just before this webinar. And I think well, we've uh, done let's do it. Let's done, break it. Let's break it. Done let's ourselves a it. disservice. Um, okay. So, yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm not sure which which one the, <laughs> the Manta is just because of the scrolling functionality. But let's have a play around with it, and we'll go from there. Um, Wade, while I'm just sorting this out, any other any other questions? Um, from our users. I will tab through, give me a second champ. All right, let's have a look. I know that Julie's just asked, do you have uh, an airbrush to brush the camera out of the mirror rather than adding a picture like Photoshop? Great question. Um, it's That's something that Matterport is gonna be releasing soon. Well, they're gonna be releasing a blurring tool. So you'll be able to blur out the Matterport camera within the mirrors and, and reflections and things like that, but not necessarily like a, a Photoshop, like a clone tool yet or anything. Um, obviously that's, that would be amazing. So definitely something that we'll, we'll look into having in, in the future. Um, but right now, unfortunately not, it's going to be the, uh, just the painting to cover that up for now. And then yep. hopefully Matterport should be really close around the corner with that blur tool. Um, so that will be amazing when, when that and gets launched. And to follow up to that, Alex, sorry to interrupt you, mate. There was another question regarding, um, being able to change colors of walls and things like that, that yes, that is coming and then in the pipeline. So that's kind of uh, on top of what was just asked and answered then. Um, what yep. I reckon we do is, Alex, is if you can get a chance, let's 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 do some deleting. What do you reckon? Just we'll try deleting some of this furniture, make some room for maybe the polar bear asset that's on the left hand side that you've got there. Let's do it. So we can absolutely. So let's remove uh, some of these. So as I mentioned before, on the right side menu, um, we have all of the assets that have been placed um, on this scrolling bar here. So for example, this fifty-inch TV that we've got here, we can click that bin to to delete it. Bin icon. Um, and then again, we can just keep going through and deleting some of these, the armchair, for example, on the left, the sofa bed and everything else within here. We'll just clear a dance floor for the polar bear. You could just clear it all, Alex, though, couldn't you, mate? Just press the old uh, cheeky, the cheeky clear all button, what do you reckon? You, you can do, yeah, you can also press clear all, yeah, to clear, that would clear all the assets from, from the entire tour. But I feel like this is a pretty good, uh, Pretty good area for the polar bear to, to be in. So this uh, this is a bit of a larger asset, so it might take a bit of time for it to load up. Uh, here we go, here he is. Perfect, so again, we're using our mouse to hover around, and then once we're happy with placement, we'll just left click to set him in. And there he is, in all of his glory. So I feel mate, like making him a little bit more scary, just maybe make him a little bit bigger. There he is. Awesome. So yeah, again, once you're happy with the scale, position and rotation, we can right click the mouse away from the asset to place it and look at those textures. That's incredible. Um, Alex, can you do me a favor, mate? Because I think this is something that we need to touch on as well as uh, with some of the other companies out there with regards to the actual uh, staging. And it's um, really clear to understand that the positioning and the assets being placed within the tour can actually be seen in Dollhouse. So if you just want to actually go out and zoom out, if you can, mate, You'll notice that the actual asset is still in dollhouse perspective. So the anyway. amazing thing is it's still animated as well in the doll's house. It still uh, still has that animation, which is awesome. Which is critical. But yeah, you thank you. There's, there's other sec other other type, uh, companies out there that are obviously doing um, other types of virtual staging out there, but uh, manipulating the spherical images or equirectangular pictures of each of the sweeps, and then obviously rendering out and then putting back in. Whereas what we're creating here is obviously completely different. Uh, in terms of uh, the assets being placed within the space, being able to walk around, modify accordingly and DIY really, and being able to then view it in Dollhouse as well, which I think is also very, very important to see and understand perspective as well. Mm. Um, so that's something to mention as well. Absolutely. And look, here's the Manta that we spoke about previously. Somewhere here. So we've set him down, but we need to change the position slightly. Whoops. <laughs> Come to the floor. That's all right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, there he goes. Seems to be pretty happy there. Where are we? That's the thing about manta rays. They're very elusive creatures. Where are we? And yeah, just to just to know, guys, as well, you can also select these assets by uh, the placed assets on the right side menu. You can just click on one of them to select them. So, for example, I'll click Polar Bear, and you can then just start playing around with position, rotation, and scale from here um, to easily find them. Um, so, a little go. What I'm going to do is position the old manta ray up. I'm going to unlock that, and we'll bring him up a little bit. Let's just go ten. While you're doing that, Alex, I'll just answer some of the other questions you've got. Brett, yeah, awesome. 
G'day, Brett. How are you going, mate? Uh, have you used for workplace planning and design? Uh, well, the answer is no, we haven't personally, but we have actually seen customers that are starting to uh, use some of their custom assets in placing some of these uh, commercial um, 3D assets in the space, um, different types of things to be able to kind of provide a bit of insight as to what it might look like prior. Um, so really at the end of the day, we are gonna be adding more assets that, that I suppose complement each vertical that we able to promote and um, pass on to your class customers to make some coin off. Cause in the, the day, that's, that's what it's all about. It's being able to create these tools to allow you guys to make some money, uh, obviously increase your revenue based on not just the Matterport scan itself, but every other facet of, of what comes from, um, you know, creating new opportunities to make some coins. So yeah, we'll be adding some more stuff, but yeah, there has been customers that have seen that being used and workplace planning and design. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, other things to mention as well, obviously, is different types of verticals you guys might be looking at seeking to, to jump on board. I mean, obviously, you've got things like um, event planning, which is obviously a, a no-brainer. Um, obviously, real estate obviously makes sense because obviously you've got a, a lease space or something that's empty that allows you to, to look at something and, and make something look a bit more prettier than kind of just bank making sure it's plain and boring. Um, but we encourage you guys to actually give us some feedback in terms of some of the other industries that we not, might not be thinking of. Um, again, we'll place back in the comment section again, but the form that we have um, as part of feedback is just give us some insights because obviously we don't know everything. We're also the visualizers, the magicians of what we create with these types of tech, but we don't know every single vertical that might be uh, a good opportunity for you guys to grow from that. So please make sure that when you are feeling in your feedback forms, in fact, Alex, is it something we could do very quickly while you've got that up? Um, do you have uh, the link for the feedback form um, available? Yeah, like absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, so there's a feedback button um, on the interface in the top right hand corner. It's just next to save as draft. So what you can do is just click that feedback form. It's going to take you straight to a new link. And yeah, from here, you can just fill in a um, bit of feedback form um, and any specific requests in here as well. So this is kind of for, for general feedback, which we really, really appreciate um, just in kind of an all round feedback form, but then also, yeah, um, requesting any specifics within here as well. So yeah, that feedback form is um, just in the top right corner of the interface. Um, let's go back to some questions. Yes, let's do that. Uh, okay, so uh, Julie Spano asked, adding uh, city, uh, cityscapes outside the window. Yep, so something we'll definitely be looking into the future, absolutely. Um, we've got Dave Livingston um, around converting assets. Um, we'll get back to you with some detailed answers about the best way um, to try and we'll basically test that out for you as well. Uh, where are we? Jump in, Alex, if you feel like you can find someone. Yeah, there's um, there's a, a question here from Mikkel. It um, says, are you planning to do a removal tool that will allow to clean a space slash room from an actual from actual, an actual furniture and object? So, yeah, absolutely. So um, that's definitely on our roadmap rather than just adding in assets. Um, we're definitely looking at being able to remove assets as well from the tours. Um, so, yeah, our, our devs are, are working really, really hard um, in, in terms of getting that um, to a level that we can we can eventually release it. Um, just be aware guys, this is currently in beta as well. So, um, there are, it's not going to be perfect. There are going to be a few small bugs, but hopefully with your guys help, um, you can let us know, um, of any bugs or anything uh, featured development requests that you want us to add in. Um, and we'll certainly be looking at every single one of them and, and considering them in our, in our pipeline. So, um, thanks for bearing with us. Obviously it's really exciting. It's an awesome, awesome feature at the moment, but it's only going to get better. Um, and hopefully I love this one, Alex. I love this one. I'm going to interrupt you, man. I'm sorry. This one gets me excited every time. Skeeter, I love this question because every time someone asks me this question, I just get really, really excited. So Skeeter's asked, after we place assets in room slash model, we'll be able to have that added in AR. Absolutely. Um, the exciting part about what we've created previous to this launch with virtual staging beta is AR Connect. So the idea is that you can actually connect the two together and be able to allow you to walk in the physical space and actually see the asset that you've placed in situ in one-to-one -one scale. So basically everything that you place within that model via virtual staging will be accessible via an added option through AR Connect. Uh, that is coming out very, very shortly. So you can appreciate uh, how much powerful, more powerful that will become once you've literally got it on the actual tour itself, say remotely viewing it online, then allowing someone to actually walk through that space and actually see it in one-to-one uh, -one scale in augmented reality via the AR Connect application. I can't harp on how much importance this is obviously to add more 
um, features and be able to kind of hit the ground running with this type of virtual staging side of things and how it complements and augmented reality. And it can also be seen in VR as well. So um, there's so many uh, really cool things that can be used in use cases for this, especially around animated um, um, assets that have been added as well. So to answer your question, I was a long one short, but yes, you definitely can. And we want to push this hard to let you know there is that option as well with AR Connect. So if you're not already using AR Connect, and I'm segueing slightly, please make sure that you test that out as well. Uh, you'll find the AR Connect option uh, inside your captured uh, account as well. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that that way. There's yeah, huge, huge things coming with, with AR Connect and virtual staging and merging those things together as well. So um, yeah, very, very excited uh, about our future roadmap. Um, so yeah, we'll try and get through a few more, a few more questions. Um, I got one. Bang, bang, let's bang, do bang. it. Yeah, let's do it, man. I've got some good ones here. Um, question was, uh, can you place meta tags on 3D assets? Absolutely you can. So again, that's another really cool thing that obviously something that doesn't exist, being able to place a meta tag on a 3D asset and then obviously create an opportunity to be able to talk about that particular asset in more uh, detail. Absolutely. Um, another question from Dave Livingston was custom assets only available to the importer? Yes, stress this, only the importer will see the own ass custom assets. I need to stress this that no one else will see the asset that you're importing that is obviously your intellectual property or someone you're working with. I'm stressing that that we that no one else in the captured platform will be able to see that custom asset that you've uploaded. So it's something I just want to stress. Yeah, that will all be all to to your own personal libraries of, of asset uploads. And yeah, just going back to placing matter tags, you can see from when I'm moving this um, this sweep ring around that when I when I drag it over an asset, it's actually registering that as a surface. Um, so yeah, definitely being able to add matter tags. Um, to, to, to those, um, it's, it's definitely coming. Um, we've got a whole load of things on our on our roadmap, but, but with custom assets, uh, a custom matter tag story, and being able to integrate those into the virtual staging as well. So yeah, definitely something that's uh, that's coming. Absolutely. Cool. Um, yes, Fiona. Um, Fiona, thank you, by the way, you always give amazing, really detailed feedback. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, the whole team do. The scroll bar for the assets does not scroll down to show all the assets. I currently have 18, but can only see 16. Do you know why? Yep. So this is something that our devs are working on. Um, I mentioned near the start of the, the webinar. Um, so yeah, at the moment, uh, we're going to be adding in the ability to delete custom uploaded assets and also the ability to, to scroll down um, if you have quite a few imported. Um, that's going to be on our next next release. So um, right around the corner. So we'll be sure to uh, to um, let you guys know when, when that's been completed and launched. I've got a Ray Velez. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Uh, I'm wanting to know around animations of the TV and, and fire and so on. Yes, absolutely. That's on its way. So thumbs up there. Obviously, you want to be able to create a bit more ambience, make it a bit more uh, looking feel like a lifestyle thing. Obviously, of course, when you've got this type of assets being added, you want to feel like you're actually in space and feel like mm. it's a lifestyle as well. Absolutely, there will be animated um, generics, I suppose, with regards to the you know fire and, and TV and, and, and the idea of actually being able to add your own anima um, own footage from potentially YouTube uh, external links and from other different parties to be able to yeah. add that into that actual asset. So again, you can imagine walking through a space um, again, it might be a real estate agent, maybe even to have them promote their business inside the, the space or any kind of other advertisements or placements. Absolutely can in theory. So mm -hmm. that's on its way, right? So thanks for that question. Perfect. Um, just another one as well from, from Fiona. I can see an asset that I placed in a laundry in the adjacent bathroom, any work around here. Again, um, something that we're definitely working on. As you can see, these manta rays are kind of going through walls and in and out of ceilings. So, um, yeah, we're going to be integrating more of a, a solid, um, yeah, integration into the walls um, so that assets don't don't pass through them. Um, so, yeah, definitely something on our list to, to go. And just to just to clarify, apologies if we confuse you before. How do you add a matter tag to an asset? So, you're going to be able to add matter tags um, when we um, integrate the feature for for custom matter tags through Captured. Um, so that's something very, very close. Our developers have uh, been working on it and um, that's very close around the corner as well. So we, we have a whole heap of things coming um, that is going to really, really improve this feature and make it more awesome than it, than it already even is. Um, so yeah, thanks for that, guys. Uh, back to Gordon, the last one was, can we upload custom assets? Yes, I'm not sure if you saw the part. There was a custom asset section that can be applied. So you've got supplied. Alex is about to drop down now custom. 
And yes, you can. Obviously in this instance, uh, GLB file compatibility is the only thing we're working with at the moment uh, with the expansion of other files that will be uh, able to be added later. And the reason for GLB, if not already known, uh, is more of lightweight and compression based stuff. It's more about making sure those tools load incredibly quickly um, and making sure that the actual textures and things and, and the files itself are actually in great quality. Um, so we'll be working a bit more behind the scenes and be able to change up some of those file formats. But uh, for now, GLB, but yes, definitely can upload and encourage people to put their own assets in there. Definitely. No, thanks, Wade. And I know, you know, we do have GLTF here. We're going to be just removing that. In the future, we'll be able to add in other files apart from GLB, um, but for now it is just GLB. So we will be removing that. So apologies of any confusion there. Um, yeah, GLB is, is the way forward at the moment. Cool. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions coming through. There's a lot, <laughs> which is great. I love it. Uh, let's have a look. What else we got? Uh, where are we? I think we've been pretty good so far, maybe. I don't, uh, Dave Livingston. Uh, hey, Dave, how's it going? Um, I don't see LB as a choice on any comp. Which do we choose? Um, let me look into that after the webinar and I'll get back to you because I was I was able to do that previously. Um, so Dave, I'll make sure that I, I get in touch um, after we're finished um, just to run through that with you. Uh, one here saying to add noise, grain clarity and textures to assets. Some look big fake. It would be great to control these fire details to help merge them. Uh, look, tools are being developed at the moment to be able to make that happen. So at the moment, obviously appreciate, again, all in beta, all trial and error, but we appreciate that feedback too. So. All warts and all guys, we really uh, appreciate that, you know, if there's something that you feel is falling short of, or at least feel it can be done better, um, please, again, it's in beta. So send us everything that you can in terms of your feedback via the form that we've that we've uh, shown you before. We wanna make this the best in the world, without a doubt, make this the best um, insert, uh, insertion tool in the world. So any feedback that can be provided, don't feel like you're uh, hurting our feelings. <laughs> we want them hurt so we can make this uh, much, much better for everyone to be used. Love it. Perfect. Um, some, a really, really good question from, from Mikhail. Can virtual staging act as a mesh render filling tool? I mean those areas in Doll's house that has a black void because Matterport Lighter could not see it during scanning. Amazing question. Um, so the answer is yes. Um, so I've just placed this washing machine. Let's just rotate it so we get the full, full glory of the washing machine. Where are we? Oh, I love a good washing machine. Love a good washing machine. Oh, mate, love a good washing machine. Sorry, I'm actually using it a trackpad on my mouse, which is a bit trickier, but there we go. There it is in all its glory. So now we can view the doll's house. And as you can see, it is covering some of that void um, somewhat. So the answer is uh, yes, um, absolutely. What we can do is just come back into here. I haven't tried this before, so let's hope it works, but it's live, we're live, so what could go wrong, obviously, but, um, I'm going to go in, I'm just going to remove this asset and I'm going to try um, adding a rug. Yeah, carpet. Carpet's a good yeah. one, obviously, yeah. Or in this case, a doormat, you know, to wipe your feet. So, I mean, obviously, the rug's exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. a good one. Last one. Um, love it. So, we'll go with, I know these ones are quite big. Perfect. So, I'm going to place that with my left click on my mouse. I'm going to bring it forward and then I'm going to go on to scale and I'm just going to widen this nice. out a bit. You could, yeah, exactly. Rotate, pull it out. Let's be honest, the design or pattern of the, no one knows the rug type. It's not like a generic kind of design. It could be a, there you go, so, look at that, bang. So there we go. We've got the rug in. And then as you can see, the manta rays seems to be interested in it as well. So yeah, look, that's covering the void as well. So um, yeah, absolutely um, great question. Um, yeah, so you can you can cover these void spots. Um, and most of those are actually gonna be by doors or windows where light's coming in anyway. So, so putting a rug down is is a good shout for it. So yeah, awesome question. Thanks for that. That's a brilliant, brilliant that, question. Mikhail. Absolutely, and these are some of the things we're talking about in regards to some of our other customers who have come up with ideas or things that we haven't thought of or even other customers haven't thought of too. So we like the idea that this kind of backwards and forwards right now with our questions are allowing us to kind of be a bit more like, oh, wow, I didn't think of that or adding it as well. So there's obviously questions that people might want to have answered that we didn't think of either. So keep them coming. I'll keep yeah, running. keep them coming, guys. Uh, okay, so... Uh, 
cool. Mikhail, I'll look into that request in a little bit more detail um, after the webinar, but great, great, great question. Um, Mikhail just said, I don't, I don't mean covering it. I mean, actually select some void and tell that I want to fill it with a material around it. Like a hole in a floor with tiles will be filled with the same render. Um, yeah, potentially. Um, I will I'll definitely get back to you on that. It's another great question. So thank you. Please keep them coming. Hey, Alex, you want to answer this one? Can you place assets on 360 views? Very good question. Let me just see if we've got any 360 views in this model. The answer is yes, really, when you think about it. I mean, in theory, my understanding is that I'm not technically savvy, but I believe the understanding is that the plane itself that's inside the model extends outwards. So the idea is that you can actually technically place assets on the outside of the model. Um, so if you were to, Alex, like, just if you want to do me a favor, mate, and grab an asset from the library and place it outside the actual model itself, in theory, yeah, the idea is that if the 360 tag is in uh, anchored to that particular model, you can see now Alex is placing an asset on the outside. And in theory, yes, if you're landing in that spherical image, which is the actual anchored 360 um, image to the tour, then yes, the idea is you can place that on there and be able to have assets on the outside. I have seen it personally uh, with people placing outdoor furniture as well, um, which is really, really cool. And which actually gets me really excited to think that off the back of what we described with placing tags on asset meta tags on 3D assets, then theory, potentially what we could be doing is, is placing um, objects on the outside and then placing tags on that, which we would not be able to do. So in theory, maybe potentially, Alex, maybe I'm just flying an idea at you. We could technically have a GLB created or a customer creates a GLB that's transparent. They could place it on the outside of the 360 view and allow a, a, a meta tag in theory during, in, down the track to be placed on a node or an asset that doesn't exist Physically, it's it's there, but it doesn't be seen. So you can now start placing tags on the outside of the property, in theory, um, which is really really cool. I just came up with that then. I'm a genius. Love it. It's got a nice big sofa, as you can see here outside the doll's house, um, that we can just sit on. Thank you, Melanie, for that. Yeah, really great, great, great question. Really good question. Okay. A couple more here. Um, where are we here? Oh, actually, we've just been told. So, no, on 360 image placement, so you need a 3D mesh. So, okay, my apologies. So, yeah, technically, you do need a mesh. So, I've been told by the, the powers to be upstairs, you actually still need a 3D mesh. Uh, my apologies. I actually thought you, potentially you could actually, you can see place an asset on the outside. Um, but, yeah, you actually do require a mesh uh, to place on that. So, technically, you could probably be using what Cortex then on the outside, convert to 3D, and then place. Yeah. An object on there would be cool though yeah, if you do that well, there you go i just i just added one into the pipeline for the devs i just threw them under a bus <laughs> <laughs> love it love it uh what is the time frame for meta tag functionality uh we're looking at q2 this year so it's not too far away yeah, perfect. Uh, will, we be, will we be adding floor plan overlay? Um, yes, it's definitely something that we uh, we will be doing in the future. Um, we just want to get everything as, as perfect as possible with with virtual staging first, um, and, and then kind of move on to, to other features and working on a couple of other things at the same time, fixing bugs and just, just making improvements. But yeah, uh, Skeeter, we'll, we'll be adding a floor plan overlay. Yes, absolutely. But we'll be sure to keep you updated um, through marketing emails oh, on that one. Well, this one, Julie, can you use animated people walking around the house? Yeah, absolutely you can. So just like the same thing that you have with uh, the animated uh, assets that we've had, like the, the polar bear. Yes, absolutely. Um, you could place someone in there. So it potentially could be a virtual assistant or someone that uh, is animated based on um, the position that's been placed in the space. So actually, in theory, yes, you could. Um, 100%. Done from your back end to create that capture method in three dimensions. I mean, there's opportunity to be able to create volumetric uh, content, which is be, be able to record someone in 3D uh, all the way around and be able to place that as a GLB file. Absolutely, you could in theory. So that's actually even more exciting thinking that if you connect that then to AR Connect and walk through the space, um, use the application, and then all of a sudden you've got that agent in front of you, then in theory, yes, you could, which is incredibly exciting to think that you could have, you know, for instance, we're talking about other business models here, 
display homes. You can have uh, people walking through a space with display homes and have their virtual assistant walk through the space in theory, talk about the assets around them. It's pretty incredible to think where this could go. It's it, Pandora's box, really. It just opens up so many different opportunities to be able to incorporate so many different ways of being able to sell this particular feature in conjunction with AR Connect as well. It's very, very exciting. Very exciting indeed. Yeah, it's uh, it's only the beginning, which is the most exciting thing um, about this this awesome feature. Um, cool. I think we're kind of kind of there on on questions. Um, any other questions that anyone else has, please feel free to send me an email, um, alex at foria.com.au. So alex at phoria.com.au. Um, let me know if you have any questions at all, any feature requests, uh, bugs, anything like that. Um, but do also use this feedback form. Um, we'd really, really appreciate that while the feature, <clears throat> excuse me, while the feature's in beta, um, yeah, um, using, using that feedback form. Yep. with any feedback you have. Also, um, my friend, sorry to interrupt you, pal. Um, please be sure to jump on board. If you're not already part of Captured and you just kind of stumbled across this and went, oh, what is this whole you know, virtual staging thing? Please log on to Captured, which is spelled C-A-P-T-U-R-3-D, captured.io forward slash free dash trial. If you go to captured.io with a three, uh, you'll be able to see the free trial sign up. You get five free property packs, as we call them, which incorporates all that you've seen here today. Please make sure you do so if you haven't already, because again, we can't assume they're already on, Alex. They might be just jumping out of nowhere. And secondly, as well, we're really, really encouraging you all to jump onto our Facebook uh, page, which is the uh, Captured uh, Community Group, CCG as we're calling it. Um, please jump on there, sign up, uh, make sure you have got a valid Captured account. Obviously, that helps with uh, some of the questions that might be asked, because the community are really kind of coming together now, Alex, don't you think? I mean, we've got nearly close Absolutely. to 500 members. Um, which has grown week on week. We're getting close to 50, 60 people every week signing up to our Capture Community Group on our Facebook page. And everyone is coming together. It's been actually quite heartwarming to see that so many different people from different walks of life using different types of uh, use methods for this particular type of feature and everything else that we do in Captured. And now we're all talking amongst themselves and, and really kind of giving people ideas and inspiration to be able to use this tool and everything else that we have for Captured. So again, I can't stress enough, go on to our Captured Community Group page on Facebook, sign up, ask lots of questions because it's not just us who's got to answer those. There are other people who are really um, big on this platform who are also answering them too as users. So we really appreciate all the feedback and the community support that we've been getting in the past few weeks. Really, really appreciate the support. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, it's just uh, mirror Wade sentiments there. It's, it's really awesome that we've built our ecosystem and community and, um, yeah, just be sure to, um, to find us, on, find it on Facebook, um, Captured Community Group uh, in brackets, CCG. Um, and yeah, we'll be posting updates and things like that in there as well. Um, so for all the latest virtual staging updates and feature launches, et cetera, um, we'll be posting in there also. So um, yeah, come and join and um, and yeah, we'll be happy to have you. I'm gonna throw this one. One thing, just, I've just thrown this one here. I actually wanted to mention, it's a really, really great idea. And the, the, the powers to be, our uh, higher ups, our senior colleagues have said they're adding to the roadmap now. So do you want to know what this one is, Alex? Because uh, if someone's going to add it quite yep. now, there's obviously a good idea. So Mikel says, I bet it would be possible to replace Windows views as well, not for a purpose of de uh, deceiving buyers, but to convert, convey a current construction going on inside the tour and like the tour. So pre as you appreciate outside what's going on. Um, I can let you know, Mikel, that um, our higher ups, our bosses have already said adding to the roadmap now. So that's a, a, so it's a fantastic idea. So well Amazing. done. So and this is great, guys. Absolutely, they were getting this thing straight in the roadmap. <laughs> so well done. Exactly. And this is why we really value all of your feedback. So yeah, any feedback, suggestions for the features, um, any bugs, difficulties you're having, improvements that could be made, please let us know. And yeah, we read every single one of them um, and, and we'll incorporate them into our roadmap. So um, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Just one more thing from, from Julie. Uh, she says, on that note, can you add a voiceover to that? So um, audio is, again, something that's coming very, very soon. It's in the final stages um, of, of development at the moment. Um, so that's going to be coming very, very shortly as well with custom matter tags um, that you'll then be able to use um, to add matter tags onto 3D assets for um, once we've launched that. So yeah, um, I think we'll, we'll leave it there. Um, but thank you so Try much, guys. Try it. So, Try it. I was going to say, look, sorry, Alex, one more thing to cut you off. Everyone that signs up to Captured automatically is a beta user. So I just want to be clear. I've had that questions throughout the week. Some people are still wondering, how do I jump onto beta? Sorry to cut you off, Alex, there, by the way, mate. That's all good. No, no, um, no. 
every single person that signs up to Captured is automatically a virtual to a, a virtual staged beta user. So I don't can't stress that enough. There's no having to plug and play and do all sorts of things. Once you sign up with those five property packs uh, that you get for free as part of your trial for the first 30 days, or even using ones that you've got uh, scanned in Matterport and added to uh, Captured or are going to use for Captured and added in, it's all complimentary for five of those properties. So again, you've got that beta use straight away, jump straight in and give us the feedback as much as you possibly can. I'll shut up now. Sorry to cut you off for the 15th time. No, not at all. Wait, that's uh, that's really important to note as well. So yeah, just, just quickly following on from that. Um, yeah, your first five orders on Captured are free when you sign up for the first time. If you haven't used Captured yet, first five orders are free um, within the first 30 days. So that includes five free models that you can integrate virtual staging into, but also five free floor plans, um, both 2D and 3D designs, completely customized designs as well. Um, if you buy a 3D floor plan, you also get a 2D floor plan for free uh, for the same property. It's a promo we're running at the moment. So, so please feel free to test that out. Um, and then also post-production that also comes um, with those five free bookings. So we can really highlight reels for you. Branding, so, yeah, talk about the branding, the overlay. Come on, speak yeah. So, so many features um, within Capture One Page websites, really detailed analytics, um, custom automated reports, and then, yeah, the overlay, branding, video overlay, menu navigation systems, lead generation. There's so, so much in there. So, um, yeah, you'll get all of that um, within your, uh, when you sign up your first five, five properties. So, yeah, come and give us a go if you haven't already. And, um, yeah, look forward to having you all on board. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate your time, guys cool. and girls. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, any other questions that we weren't able to answer, please feel free to email me and I'll make sure I get back to you. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining and um, yeah, see you all on the flip side. Bye for now.